Hello and welcome to Penguin Classics On Air. This is Elder Roeder, Editorial Director of Penguin Classics. In time for Hispanic Heritage Month, we have the Penguin Classics debut of the first novel in English by a Mexican-American woman, Maria Amparo Ruiz de Burton. Ruiz de Burton was also the first 19th century California writer to publish a novel in the aftermath of the Mexican-American War. Through her novel, and through a selection of newly translated letters, which serves as an appendix to the Penguin Classics edition, readers will make a major rediscovery of a literary work and writer who offers insight on the Civil War and U.S. politics of the time. Today's guest is Amelia Maria de la Luz Montez, the editor and introducer of Who Would Have Thought It? Amelia is Associate Professor of English and Director of the Institute for Ethnic Studies at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. She is the co-editor of Maria Ampara Ruiz de Burton, Critical and Pedagogical Perspectives. She is currently at work on a fictional memoir and a critical text on Latino writers and artists of the Midwest. She was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Can you briefly describe who would have thought it and why you decided to edit a new edition for Penguin Classics? Well, a young Mexican girl, Lola, is rescued by a New England doctor after her mother dies. This is the skeletal description of who would have thought it. The setting is post-Gold Rush, California. When Lola reaches New England and meets the doctor's family, this is when the clash of cultures begins, and the novel becomes a very humorous satire on New England and Washington politics in the 19th century, specifically during the Civil War. And it is also a love story, which makes it a great read for those who enjoy reading about the Civil War and romance, politics, and religion. I decided to edit a new edition specifically for Penguin Classics because of the novel's historical importance. Here is the first Mexican-American novel, one that is much more complex than simply telling a telling us what it is like to be a Mexican-American in the 19th century. Uh, The plot encompasses a broad panorama, so to speak, in that it gives us a glimpse of the Mexican-American during this time while also commenting on the nation's political, social, and cultural scene in the mid-19th century. No other novel of the time gives us such a complex braiding of Mexican and American culture coming together. You've described to me the rich life that Ruiz de Burton had, and um, I'd like you to share a little bit about her background for Penguin Classics listeners who might not know about her. Well, Ruiz de Burton was born in 1832 and died in 1895, and she came from an elite military family in La Paz. And during the Mexican-American War, she met her husband, Henry Burton, who also came from an elite military family, and he had ties to Washington, D.C. politics and the Lincolns. And so through Henry Burton, she was able to also connect to American culture, politics, society in a very unique way. And because of all these experiences with her husband, she was able, and then, of course, there's her gift of writing and her voracious reading that helped her then become the novelist she is, um, or she became. And what was the response to the novel when it first came out? New York Flip and Cop magazine gave it a good brief review saying it was amusing in its broad contrasts, frank mess room humor, and boldly shaped diversities of character. Then after that, there there were some negative reviews, as many books do um, have some no- negative reviews. But then when the book arrived in California, it was very well received. In fact, the San Francisco Daily Alta California in 1872 referred to the book as, quote, a new sensation for the public and discussed the plot as new, original, vigorous in language, and no mere idle story, but a satire directed against certain exhibitions of hypocrisy and codfish aristocracy. 
What will readers now find surprising about the novel? What does Maria Amparo Ruiz de Burton do here that none of her contemporaries did at the time? Well, she provides quite an original voice that really none of her contemporaries could offer. Um, Harriet Beecher Stowe does a good job of looking at New England culture as well. However, her reference and experience is New England, whereas Reese de Burton's is Mexican. So her novel helps us better understand the diversity of cultures present in 19th century North America. Um, Included in the uh, novel are not only Mexicans, but the Irish are present in this novel, as are the French. And it also gives us a very personal glimpse of the struggles the families and the soldiers experienced during the Civil War. Among professors and teachers, what does Ruiz de Burton provide that will appeal to the students? Well, when I teach this novel, my students are most surprised at the scope of the novel and at the revelation that Mexicans were writing at this time. The surprise then makes the novel much more appealing to readers because it helps them have a much more complex picture of 19th century North America. And this is very important for students to understand. Students also very much enjoy Reese de Burton's sense of humor. Uh, Through her humor and the way she tells this satirical story, their idea of the United States at this time begins to include the Mexican-American experience and perspectives. So it's very important.